of a Metzia, Dav Dalid, today's Dav sponsored, the Four Shlema, the Shira Hadassah Bas Miriam. The Gemara continues to prove Rabbi Chia's law that when witnesses testify to a partial claim, the defendant must swear on the rest by way of a Kabbal Chomer, and the Brisa brings a support to this from our Mishnah. The Gemara suggests a new source for this Kavachomer to teach Rabbi Chia's law. Instead of learning it from one's own admission, it learns it from a Tzara Shave of Piv and Edechon, one's own admission and the law of one witness. The argument is as follows. Number one, one witness cannot obligate a defendant to pay the plaintiff, but he can obligate him to swear to witnesses that can obligate the defendant to pay, can certainly obligate him to swear. The Gemara is not concerned that one witness obligates an oath only on what he testifies not on the other part of the claim, because one's own admission requires an oath also on the part that he denies. Even if we would argue, perhaps, one's own admission is so strong that it cannot be contradicted, and that is the reason it can impose an oath on the part denied, whereas one witness can be contradicted, and therefore can impose an oath only on the part of the claim he testifies, this cannot refute the use of one witness as part of the proof, because in spite of his weakness, he still imposes an oath. Therefore, the common denominator between them is that both impose an oath on the defendant, because the case includes either admission and denial to a part of a claim, or denial to a claim that is supported by a witness. This extends similarly to the case where two witnesses testify, and therefore they can generate an obligation for one to swear, for the defendant to swear. The fact that Hazama does not apply to one's own admission, and one witness who testifies falsely, whereas it does apply to two witnesses, only demonstrates the weakness of one, we one witness. However, in spite of this weakness, he still can impose an oath. The next step is the Bryce's support. The Bryce brings the support to this Kavachomer from our Mishnah. The proof is as follows. When both are holding the garment, it is as if witnesses are testifying that part is theirs, and in order to acquire the rest, an oath is required. However, in the case of Rabbi Chia, where he wants to impose an oath on the defendant, which we call not moida b'mikzas, edim b'mikzas, where there's edus on part of the claim, there are witnesses only on behalf of the lender. It is because of this the borrower has to swear. Had there been witnesses supporting his claim, as in our Mishnah, then there is testimony for both, and he would not be required to swear to take an oath. Therefore, the Gemara explains, it cannot be that the proof from our Mishnah is on this din of Rabbi Chia of Edim and Mekzas. The proof of the Brisa concerns another law of Rabbi Chia called Helech. This law is argued by Rav Sheshis. The claim of Helech means, here, it is yours. The money you lent me has not been spent. He not only admits to the claim, but so to speak gives him even now, what he owes him. Rabbi Chia, he holds that in spite of the plaintiff's possession, it is still 
it falls, it still falls under the category of Moda B'mitzvah. The Mishnah proves that Heluch is similar to Moda B'mitzvah because they are both, as plaintiffs, in possession of half their claim, and they still have to swear. Although he agrees the oath of the Mishnah is a Takonis Chachamim, they, the Chachamim still would not institute an oath which is not Ke'en Doraisa, based on a Torah oath. And from this he proves, at least in the case of Heluch, that the defendant has to take an oath on the second part. Reb Sheshis, on the other hand, he holds that this is a different category than a partial admission. It is what we call kofar hakol, claim of a complete denial, because the money he admits and transfers to the plaintiff is no longer part of the equation. Therefore, he does not swear, and the oath of the Mishnah is a takonis chachomim, not a shvua doraisa, not based on a shvua doraisa, but as we explained before, to prevent people from grabbing other people's garments. Now, the Gemara discusses this Indian of Heluch and brings proofs back and forth as to whether Heluch is patur or chayev. The first case the Gemara brings is a loan document where the loan document says that one owes another dinarim or slayim without stating an amount. The lender claims five and the borrower claim, admits to three of the five. Reb Shimon ben Elazar says in such a case, he has to swear on the rest as a mode of a mitzvah. Reb Yekiva, on the other hand, says he is like one returning a lost object, since based on the terms of the document, he technically only owes him two. The Chachomim did not impose an oath on a Meshiv Aveda in order not to discourage people from returning lost objects. According to Rabbi Shimon Elazar, he swears only if he admits three, not two, because this is a case of Haluk, since a debt recorded in a document can be collected from land. So it, because it can be collected from land, it is if the creditor is in possession already and is not required to swear. The Gemara rejects this as a proof of Haluk that one is putter from Ashur for two reasons. Number one, he does not take an oath where he claims he owes two because the document supports his claim. It has nothing to do with Haluk. Secondly, he does not swear for a claim of two because the lien of the loan makes it an oath concerning a claim of land. However, if he claims three, he has to swear because there is no lien on the third seller. The Gemara rejects this as a proof that Heluch is liable to an oath. If Rabbi Akiva held him liable for a claim of two, one would claim three to exempt himself from an oath. One who admits owing some of the utensils claimed from him and denying others has to swear concerning land if he denies such a claim as well. The Gemara understood that the blending of cases in a, in a Mishnah where he admits to land and denies utensils, or admits and denies utensils, must be similar, indicating the latter as being a case of Heluch. The Gemara rejects that notion, but explains the blending of cases to indicate sometimes a Shua is required for land.